Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of That's What's Up Wednesday. <laughs> so today I know it's a little late um, in the day um, to be posted, but that's okay. <laughs> Better late than never, right? Anyway, um, so let's pray and we're going to talk about another woman of the Bible. That was lovely, right? Also, I got new glasses. How do we feel? Cheese. Cheese, cheese. Anyway, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've given us. Thank you for your son and his holy name. Thank you for um, giving me a word to share with people. I pray that touch somebody and minister to somebody, Lord. Hopefully, um, just work through me to say what you want me to say and do what you want me to do. And I just pray that someone um, just speaks to somebody. Um, in your name I pray. So let's talk about Ruth. Okay, who is Ruth? Well, to me, Ruth is a lot of things. She is, she's a hard worker. She's lovely. She was faithful, dedicated. Just her story is just how we should be in our walk with God. So Ruth was a virtuous woman. She was a Moabite woman, a little background. She married Naomi's son. Naomi had a husband and two sons and they moved down to Moab and her two sons married two Moabite women. Oh, I almost said Oprah. <laughs> Ophrah, Ophrah? I think that's right. And Ruth. Anyway, her husband done croaked. So did her two sons. So she was left with her two daughter-in-laws, not Oprah, but Oprah <laughs> and Ruth. And Naomi was like, Hey, I've heard that they have, you know, good things in Bethlehem. So I'm going to go back, but y'all two should stay here. And they were like, no. And they cried. And she was like, yeah, go like, I really don't want you to follow me, but if you want to No. And she was like, um, no, you should really stay here. This is your town. This is your land. You know people here. You could possibly get remarried to maybe of likeness, uh, another Moabite man. Because um, we follow, you know, she's like, well, I follow this God. I worship this God. And, um, you know, typically Moabite women did not. Sinners. I'm just kidding. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> so she was like, you should stay here. And Oprah, Oprah, <laughs> dang it, Oprah was like, all right, I'll stay. But Ruth was like, girl, don't even ask again. I'm going with you, and that's final. So she went, and they went to Bethlehem, and they traveled, and Ruth was like, where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Who you love, I'll love. And the God you serve will be my God. So she not only left everything she was familiar with but she took on took on the god that she served too i think that that's really incredible and i'll tell you later why. okay so anyway so they went to bethlehem and ruth ended up working in boaz's field and boaz was like Ooh, who is that hot mama you know and uh, the servant of boaz was like Here's the lowdown. So he gave her all the lowdown, you know, like her husband croaked and she came here. She willingly chose to come here. She left everything behind for Naomi. I mean, she was dedicated. She was like, we're blood now. I'm going with you. So she did. She went with her and um, they gave him all the rundown and he was just amazed and admired her. And he was like, you need to uh, follow my servants around don't go out to the outskirts, you know, the corners, because back then they would get all the grain, but leave the corners for the um, people who didn't have money, you know, like uh, they would leave the fields for the poor people so they could have food. So anyway, so he was like, girl, you don't need to be, you know, searching in the poor area. Follow my girls around and we'll get you some food. So she did. Then she went back and she was like, Naomi. Here's the hot tea. There's this hunkadora man named Boaz, and he told me to 
hang with his girls and get food there because apparently she got in a butt and Naomi was like, where'd you get this from? This is odd. Anyway, so she did that. And Naomi was like, girl, do it. And so she did it. Anyway, so Naomi was like, okay, I think you should do these. I guess it was a ritual for if a man accepted you or something. Anyway, so since she was part of really Naomi's family, she was like, well, in order to be redeemed, go and lay at his feet. And if he covers you up, that means he'll take you as a wife. Something like that. Yeah, that's right. Because I read it to, yeah, last night. I read it last night. <laughs> I remember. It's French. So and if he covers you up with this towel or this cloth, you know, this blanket thing, um, that means he will take you on as his wife and he accepts you. But she laid at his feet and he was like, I would, I would, but there's somebody closer in the lineage than me. So he got up, he's like, stay here tonight. I'll get up in the morning and ask this guy if he wants, um, you know, Naomi's land and if he wants to take you on as a wife. So I think Boaz knew what he was doing when he asked this man because he didn't word it. He worded it just right to where the man was like, nah, I can't take on all that. So Boaz was like, okay, then I will do it. And back then custom was you give the person your shoe. So Boaz took off his shoe and gave it to the um, closer of Ken. And that meant the deal was so sealed and they couldn't go back on his word. So Ruth and Boaz um, became husband and wife and on their beloved wedding night, um, God blessed her to be able to conceive. And she gave birth to um, Obed. And what's interesting is this right here. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. So God not only redeemed Ruth, but made her a part of the lineage of the birth of Christ. She was an outside woman. She was a, a Moabite woman, like excommunicado, man. She was somebody, that type of people you didn't really marry, but they moved there because um, Naomi and her husband, her sons moved there and then they married Moabite women. Now, if that was allowed or not, I don't know, but um, you're not supposed to, the thing was you don't, you know, mess with, you know, certain women, certain people, you know. Um, anyway, so he made her a part of lineage. He not only redeemed her from the loss of her husband losing her entire family, you know, left them all behind. But I think God rewarded her simply for this reason. Ruth took on a God that wasn't her own, you know, of her own Moabiting nation, Moabite ways. She left all that behind. She willingly not only left what was familiar to her, but she took on, she left her Moabite beliefs and took on the beliefs of a God she didn't even know. I mean, she willingly was like, I'll love your God because that's the God you serve and I'm going with you. And I just think that that's interesting. And um, she left her hometown, her family. She left where she met her husband. She left where her husband died. And she left a lot behind for God. God rewarded her faith. To me, this is how I see her story. She was redeemed and redemption was brought to her. God rewarded her faith and her faithfulness. Her determination to take care of her mother-in-law. Someone she probably didn't know very long and someone that is not your family. I mean, usually you tend to cling to your own family, your own mother, you know, you'd be afraid to leave, but she was like, no, I'm going with her. I'm gonna take care of her and dedicated her life to Naomi. But I have a few questions. Now that we know Ruth's story, what if, <clears throat> what if we left it all behind? all the uncertainty, everything we're familiar with, and dedicated ourselves to God. Worked hard, stepped out in faith, and was brave like Ruth was. How many of us would do that? Full on, just 
whatever God is telling us to walk away from, to leave behind, and to step out in faith and bravery, bravery and did it, how many of us would dedicate our time to God? And what if we brave, bravely said what Ruth 1, 16 through 17 says in our walk with God? But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where I die, I will die. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do to me so and more also, if anything, but death parts you and me. So she was in this for life. She was like, I'm going to serve your God. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be buried next to you till death do us part. I mean, she was right there with Naomi. And I think God rewarded her faith. She chose to leave what was certain to go after what was uncertain. And what's interesting is that we think we'll be blessed in what is certain. We think that if we hang on to what we're familiar with, that is where, you know, the redemption and the blessing comes. Because why would I have to be made uncomfortable in order to fulfill God's plan and calling for my life? And I heard a pastor, it's probably, you've probably heard it because it's pretty famous on the interwebs. Um, he said, God's more interested in your character than he is your comfort. And that has always just stuck in my head. He is more interested in your character than your comfort. And God was using Ruth and changing Ruth and making her character into who he needed her to be to bring about a bigger purpose, and that is the birth of Christ. Because without Ruth, where where does the story even unfold? You know, had she not have been obedient, had she not have willingly went with Naomi and served the God she served. So my closing argument <laughs> to you all is if you feel like you've lost everything and things feel uncertain i'm gonna ask you to step into that uncertainty to to step into the uncertainty and be faithful to god and have faith that he is going to redeem you tenfold and bring about his purpose because he will he will. And I think we're too afraid sometimes to step into the uncertainty simply because it's uncertain. But if we are following the one who is certain, then we can be certain that his plans will come to flourish. So step into the uncertainty, step into the unknown. Be brave enough to do what God is calling you to do, even though you don't have all the answers, because you won't. You're not going to have the answers. You're not going to have it figured out. Just trust him. Have faith. Step into that uncertainty with full certainty of who your faith is certain in. So this week, let's be like Ruth. Faithful, brave, dedicated, and hard at work and her walk with God. Go where he goes. Let him lead you where he needs to lead you. And step into the uncertainty. And um, lastly, how can we apply this to our personal lives? Well, sometimes you have to leave what is certain and enter into uncertainty in order for God's plan to be fulfilled. Without Ruth stepping into uncertainty, she could have stayed where it was comfortable. But without Ruth stepping into uncertainty, where would the lineage of Christ be? Without her obedience and her faithfulness, where would things have gone? So, and then second, step out in faith. Sometimes you just got to take that leap of faith and say, God, I trust you. And lastly... We got to remember such an important thing. God redeems all that is lost and adds abundance to it. 
He doesn't just replace what you have lost. He replaces it and adds it and adds so much more to it. I mean, just adds abundance. I don't know how another way to say that, but he does. He adds 10 times what you have lost and it's amazing. So remember that this week, apply it. And so, yeah. <laughs> That is what I have for you this week. Okay, see ya. See you next week. Maybe I'll talk about Naomi. <sighs> Maybe. I don't think there's much on her. Anyway, moving on. Bye. See you next week. Ah. I'm back. I forgot to pray. <laughs> God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've given us. Be with everybody watching. And I just pray that we can step into the uncertainty with certainty of the one of who our faith is in um, and follow you and trust you and love you and know that just because things appear uncertain that we are following and trusting in the one that is certain and we can be certain <laughs> that everything will work out for your greater purpose and for our benefit because you love them. you love us and your word says um, you will bring about the good of those who love you so I just pray Lord that we trust in you, we follow you, and we'll be a little bit like Ruth this week. Your name I pray, amen. Okay, bye for real.